Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody out there. This is Jordan. I'm going to be your captain tonight. We are going to be storming. And if you give me just one moment, I'm going to get all of these social media promotions out of the way and join you back again to start a Legacy League. Hello everybody, this is Jordan. I'm going to be bringing you all another Legacy League with the Epic Storm. We're going to be testing out something a little bit new today. Not too much different, but last week we were testing out our version 13.8. And today uh, I have it listed as a different version number. Really not sure if that's going to be official or not. but. I'm going to be testing out a pair of pyroblasts in the sideboard with the Epic Storm. We can get into talking about why we're playing pyroblasts as we make our way through a league. If you are in chat, make sure to say hi. I'd like to see who all is viewing us and uh, who all's hanging out with us tonight. I'm going to... Um, get started by I've already joined a league and we're going to start off by finding a match all right so how's everybody doing tonight it's good to see that there are some people already watching and uh, getting ready to join us in the journey of a legacy league. I'm really excited about this. I have been playing with Pyroblast and Voidrend for a little bit now, uh, the past couple of weeks, and I'm liking both of them for different reasons. Um, and I'm excited to see what kind of takes chat has on which ones. Music's a little loud. Yeah, I can take that down a notch. Um, all right, we are on the play. I would like to play first for this one. Oh, I restarted Magic Online and it resets my window adjustment. Um, unfortunately, this hand has a lot of really powerful cards. I don't think that it's going to be worth keeping. We're gonna take a mulligan. This, however, is lovely. It's going to allow us to Galvanic Relay on turn two at the earliest. Sounds like something that I would like to be doing. We're going to see what our opponent does. They've mulliganed to six, and I'm going to keep this six. Hey, Michael. It's good to see you in chat. I am liking the Pyros. Um, I've had a couple of leagues where Pyroblast has come up really nicely, but it hasn't been against Blue-Red Delver. It's been against other fair blue matchups or even uh, Mono Blue Painter actually ended up being pretty nice. Um, you know, I'm talking about Mono Blue Painter and almost skipping through my turn, but we're gonna take a, a little bit of a slower approach and make sure that we play that Scalding turn. These pyroblasts have been nice. Uh, our main goal is to 
address some of the problematic things that are coming out of Blue Red Delver, uh, Counterbalance being one of them. And this is going to allow us to play around Counterbalance through sequencing. It's not uncounterable like Void Rend is, which serves a similar purpose. But we can play around it, maybe figure out what the top of the card is. I thought I did lower the music. Sorry about that. Um, Wasteland is kind of rough. Um, I am looking at the chat, Bryant. I, th I did turn down the music, but I, I guess I didn't turn it down quite enough. Ooh, Ad Nauseam might be good in a little bit. Uh, my opponent, by the way, named Wishclaw Talisman uh, with this Pithing Needle. Turns out that they know what we're playing. It is the Bryant Cook effect. Uh, uh, the chat box in OBS is still not working. Mm. Okay, I thought that I had adjusted something that was going to work. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, we should probably talk about that after this stream is done so that we can get that addressed. Oh, they're a Field of the Dead deck. Are they mulch lands? I don't know. Take a draw. Bauble is really nice. So let's count our mana. We have one, two, three, four. So we're one mana away from an Ad Nauseam. I don't want to crack this Bauble. Um necessarily. I could always Galvanic Relay for six and hope to find the mana, and I think that that's what I'm likely to do. Um, our deck is something like 60% mana, so we're likely to hit the additional mana that we need to cast this Ad Nauseam. But um, in that case, I can use this Mishra's Bobble as an additional draw, depending on if I hit extra artifacts to turn this Mox Opal back on. Uh, I think that we're just gonna go straight for a Badlands. It's going to get us both of our combo colors and we can pop out our Exile Zone to figure out what these five cards are gonna be. Echo of Eons, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Mishra's Bobble and a Brainstorm. This is great. So before I do anything further, we can ad nauseum without a six drop in our deck. This is one of the best reveals against an opponent that I know is not playing blue. And we revealed a couple of zero mana artifacts. So I can actually Mishra's Bobble them. They're revealing a Dark Depths. And I can still have this Mox Opal turned on. All right, drawing a brainstorm. It's never a bad card to have in your hand. And they're playing Life from the Loam. Okay, so they're gonna be able to Wasteland this Badlands, which they take care of, but that actually is not going to turn off Ad Nauseam for us. And they did play that Dark Depths. And we drew a land anyway. So let's play out our zero mana artifacts really quick. Lotus Petal and Mishra's Bauble. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't actually need to play out the Scrubland. Um, however, I think that it's going to be more beneficial to play out our land. That gives us a Lotus Petal um, uncracked so that we can get uh, Metalcraft a little bit more simply and have whatever color that we want open. So our Ad Nauseam is going to draw us a lot of cards, hopefully. Gromox and the Lion's Eye Diamond are good. Another Mox Opal and Lion's Eye Diamond. We're just looking for some kind of action. That Wishclaw Talisman is going to do it. I 
can keep flipping, that Burning Wish is going to be just fine. I don't want to repeat this, and we can cast a bunch of our spells. And I believe that this is going to be all wrapped up. Just cast all of these. Make sure to hold control as I cast this Burning Wish. Sacrifice a Lion's Eye Diamond for three black. Getting the... I can, these never actually end up staying. The sideboard windows keep snapping, which is why I don't have it open. Get this Tendrils of Agony and Dome our opponent. Lovely turn four win. Our opponent is nice in chat. So against lands, we don't necessarily know what a sideboard plan looks like from our opponent. Um, they could have Thorn of Amethyst. They could have Mind Break Trap. It's going to be a little bit of a toss up. A toss up. We're going to consult a sideboard guide. Um, My opponent's messaging that they knew what I was on. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they had that opportunity to capitalize on it with that pithing needle, but glad it didn't work out. Um, so we're gonna bring in prismatic endings. I'm consulting our sideboard guide that you can find as a Patreon supporter at any tier, patreon.com slash the epic storm. And you can actually have a pretty comprehensive sideboard guide and deck list for uh, any matchup that you might want. And if you have any suggestions for matchups that aren't on there, we're pretty easy to uh, listen and take feedback as well. Um, I did just minimize the sideboard guide, which is something I shouldn't do. A couple of thought seizes. And we're taking out two silences as well. That makes sense. Uh, so it makes sense because even if they are Mind Break Trap deck, which is moderately unlikely, um, they're usually permanent hate, but the Thought Seizes and the two Orms Chants can cover that well enough, and then the Prismatic Endings are going to be useful for our Thorn of Amethysts or um, problematic permanents like that. So chat, how is my audio? Can you guys hear me just fine? My music isn't too loud, things like that. Let me know in chat. Our hand looks pretty reasonable. We don't have those disruptive elements in Prismatic Ending and Thoughtseize, but this is still a solid turn one Wishclaw Talisman imprinting a brainstorm and then we've got a turn two ad nauseum possibility if we draw enough mana. Uh, hey, Sleepy, it's glad to uh, glad to be your songbird that wakes you up at night instead of in the morning. Um, our opponent started off with seven and a mox diamond. giving us a sphere of resistance. I guess it's a sphere of resistance, not a thorn, a thorn of amethyst. Um, okay. Well, this is going to allow us enough mana. I'll take a blue source because of these Brainstorms? No, I'm going to imprint one of the brainstorms underneath the Chrome Mox. So I would like a Badlands. Um, you know who doesn't sound quite like a lovely songbird? My cat when I'm not paying attention to them. He is lovely and needy. But 
I, uh, I'm going to play with, with y'all instead of messing around with him tonight. Blast zone. Okay. Um, our opponent might know a trick with blast zone and thespian stage where they can copy the blast zone. And the thespian stage copy doesn't have any counters on it. They can destroy our artifacts. Um, hey, Nart Dolphin. Yes, uh, Pyro instead of Void Ren tonight. We're just trying something else. Uh, Thoughtseize is a good draw. So Thoughtseize is going to... Hmm. I don't have quite enough mana to do everything that I want. Um, hey, Justin. Um, I'm going to probably forego Thoughtseizing. They have, yeah, they've already deployed their threat. I'm going to brainstorm instead, looking for interaction for this fear of resistance. And as far as the pyros instead of the void wrens, I, I think that I'm just trying something new. I don't know if it's going to be any better, but we're going to try something else out. It's going to be useful against those blue matchups that we are trying to tech against. Um, and it doesn't have that uncounterable clause like Voidrend, but it is useful against a resolved um, counterbalance, um, which is something that we're interested in. My cat is messing with things. This is a pretty fast lage. You are right, Sleepy. Um, potentially concerning. Um, we'll have to see. That Burning Wish can get our sideboard um, prismatic ending. So that might not be fast enough. We're going to have to see. Um, but the fact that we do have the full four and we only board in three at a time means that the fourth is always a burning wish target. It's very handy. And I'm going to put it into my hand and pass. And just like Athalia, I can ending the sphere of resistance. They do get a dark depths. I can ending the sphere of resistance. Um, yeah, Sleepy, this was a great draw. The Burning Wish was pretty much what we needed um, so that we actually have a chance. So we're going to be able to prismatic ending the sphere and then dark ritual out wish claw talismans and brainstorm off of a mox opal. We're gonna have to see what happens. Uh, our draw is going to be really really helpful at this point. Uh, helpful or hurtful, I guess. We're going to hope for the former. And see what our opponent does. The Dark Depths has entered play. They all have colorless lands. And a Mox Diamond, I suppose, but... Hmm. It is nice that they can't deploy something like another sphere and hold up an activation for of thespian stage they didn't have an expedition or expedition exploration um so they haven't been able to turbo out their lands which has been good for me they kept it on the strength of sphere not how quick depths is being deployed Lion's Eye Diamond does it. I believe that that's an ad nauseum. Uh, but first things first. God, the LED was such a good draw. Um, okay, we're going to get rid of this sphere. And two colors. It's gone. We can 
Dark Ritual. Hey, Leonard. Uh, it's good to see you in chat. Welcome in. Um, okay. This is nine mana, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm going to tap the Mox Opal, I suppose. I could leave it untapped, hoping to ad nauseum into a another artifact, but I think that it's just better. So I'm going to just make sure I don't misclick anything, and then I'm going to take a look at chat. Um, so we've got a Wish Claw, a land, which is nice. We haven't hit a Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrome Mox is good. Another Lion's Eye Diamond. Dark Ritual. I think that this is going to be all rolled up. I would like to find a, uh, an Orem's Chant or a Thoughtseize. Um, okay, so we can put, play around a potential Mind Break Trap. So I think we're all good now. We can just stop. No need to rub it in. Uh, but I will answer chats. Yes, pirates win again. Uh, the storms be of ruin. Arg. Something like that, right? Sleepy, you're right. Uh, ooh, lovely. Our opponent has just conceded, saved us the time. We'd love to see it. Um, yeah, Sleepy, that was a pretty good lands draw. Um, and Leonard, yeah, the pyroclasm, or the pyroblast, excuse me haven't come up in this league yet, right? We just uh, finished round one against lands and um, the the pyroclasms are or pyroclasms, I keep doing that. Pyroblasts are specifically for blue matchups and it's going to be a toss up between Voidrend and Pyroblast right now as far as what kind of tech we want against the blue matchups. I'm trying out Pyroblast. Last week, I tried out a couple of Void Rens. Next week, who knows? Might be something else entirely. Um, this hand, though, looks pretty good. We're a little bit glutted on these two drops, right? I can't turn on Mox Opal without resolving one of them, but I've got the lands. We're doing pretty good. Um, oh, Sleepy, uh, the way that you flip like that is to not McKinley your Nas. That is the best advice I can give you. Um, just don't do it. Uh, Storm is six. We're not playing around Mind Break. Well, we could because we just flipped the Orem's Chant that was going to allow us to chant my opponent and prevent them from casting a Mind Break Trap. They would have had to have two Mind Break Traps in hand, which was going to be a little less likely for them. Um, yeah, Phyrexian Wombat. I recognize this username. I'm not going to search them out or anything like that, but this does look like initiative, which if we can draw something that lets us turn one a Wishclaw Talisman, I'd feel pretty good, but that's not going to do it. Um, Oh yeah, all of the LEDs off of Nas. That was a lot of LEDs, I'm not gonna lie. I actually lost count. It might have been might have been three of them. Might have been all three that were left remaining. Yep. Okay, we are White Plume Adventuring. This is like the least worrisome of their cards. Um, obviously the initiative is a very powerful mechanic, but it is very powerful in uh, ways that we care less about than, say, an Archon of Imeria, which is a rule of law effect that we have a really big problem with. So this is, this is much better as far as their turn one opportunities go. Um... Okay, so I can certainly echo here. Um, however, I don't think that's going to get us where we want. We will have already made a land drop. I am going to deploy all of my zeros now. Um, I just don't think that I want to chance an echo when I have an ad nauseum on turn three. I can 
brainstorm at the end of their turn. So, Lenart, you're right in that Pyroblast is worse against Counterbalance than Voidrend. Um, the biggest Counterbalance deck right now is obviously Blue Red Delver, playing usually two in the sideboard. Um, however, because Delver is a deck that wants to cut out our ability to play our game, you know, they are they are a Wasteland deck, they're a Days deck, all of these things. Um, yeah, Jaidenheim. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I kind of thought I recognized your name. I didn't, I didn't search you out or anything like that, but I'm glad that I recognize you from chat. That's cool. Met in the wild, as it were. Uh, Naya Initiative. Okay, okay. Um, Caves of Chaos Adventurer. This is just fine. This is going to allow us to ad nauseum on turn... Well, I guess ad nauseuming from 10 is not the greatest idea. We are going to brainstorm at the end of turn here. Well, hold up. Let's think about this. Do we want to brainstorm now? Or do we want to um, brainstorm on our turn, see one more card, potentially be able to peer into the abyss instead? Um, hmm, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, you could have cropped to waste my my land. Yeah, that would have t given you an extra couple of turns. That would have given me an extra couple of turns as well. Um, I had the ability to turn on my Mox Opal eventually, I think. Is that right? It sounds about right. Um, I'm going to brainstorm on my turn. I'm going to draw one more card. Yeah, Nardolphin, I'm going to wait. Burning Wish. Okay, cool. So this is one, two, three, four, five, oh, let's play a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a peer into the abyss. And you just, just draw the best card in your deck. That's just all you have to do. Isn't that, is that what everybody does? Ah, Bryant, you're almost out of a job. Uh, so what we're gonna do is get a Lion's Eye Diamond. Cast, cast it. And hold control as I resolve this burning wish. Get a peer into the abyss. Uh, let's plumb the dark depths of the ocean, peer into the abyss, and find a win. Look at that. That's great. Into the abyss we go, Justin. Absolutely. Um, let's find out if our opponent wants to let us cast a bunch of spells. Oops. Our opponent is letting us do all of the things. I'm pretty excited about that. Okay. Cool. Turn three. Love to see that. So, let's see. Um, sorry, Leonard. I was answering your question about counterbalance. Uh, Pyroblast is countered by counterbalance, obviously, but it is significantly cheaper than Voidrend against the Wasteland deck. And I think that the ability to either counter counterbalance on the stack with Pyroblast or... Um, sequence your play so that they are enticed to put a two drop on top to counter a wishclaw talisman or a land or a mishra's bobble on top to counter our zero mana artifacts at which point we can potentially resolve the pyroblast so being able to sequence your play around it can potentially work and they're not always guaranteed to have on one on top anyway um even if it's um just a raw flip right um, Leonard, we have 
considered like I can't even remember what all we were considering. Pyroblast and Void Rend were certainly the two that we cared the most about um, in terms of the blue matchups. Um, I don't know if there's any other uh, card that's going to fit that space, right? If you have any suggestions, I mean, we're all ears, but I think that so far, unless we go into some five color nonsense, right? And it doesn't really work out that way because we have one less land at the moment. Um, so our fetch and dual land mana base is a little up in the air because of that. Um, unless we go into a five color and play Abrupt Decay, I think that this is where we're going. Uh, play the right Pyroblast arc, Isaac. What is the right Pyroblast arc? I am playing the original Ice Age arc from Kaya, F and F uh, no, it's just Kaya Foglio. Um, that is, in, in my opinion, the best, but um, it might not be your, your cup of tea. We are taking a few heavy mulligans. Oh, I want to keep this so bad, but I can't. Man. They have also taken a mulligan to five, by the way. Um, yeah, Dolphin, the, the plus one storm, I can target anything, I can whatever, uh, is not nothing. Um, it's obviously not great. Speaking of not great, this hand is kind of garbage but I'm going to have to keep with the prismatic ending and the wish god talisman. Um, I do have a set of signed pyroblasts that I'm very excited to sleeve up at a local or something like that. Um, yeah, I can also counter mind break trap. I don't think that I'm going to be bringing in pyroblast specifically in the mind break trap um, matchups, but I do know that, for example, uh, Ninjas has been playing Mind Break Trap every once in a while, right? Because it's another big flip off of a Yuriko trigger. Ugh. Okay. Well, I'm going to fetch now this Archon because that's how magic works. Hmm. And contrary to what I would normally do, normal convention tells us to play out the fetch right now, I'm actually going to be playing out the underground sea um, because, ooh, look at that. Yeah, I can now prismatic ending this Archon next turn. Or if I didn't draw a Lotus Petal, if I drew another untapped land, or not an untapped land, a non-fetch land, I could um, prismatic ending in two turns as opposed to three turns with a fetch land. I did just rip the wish. Yeah, that, um, you don't need to look at the VOD. That's, there's only pain there. When you plumb the depths, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna hurt. Um, Yeah, picking up a couple of Void Rens is pretty strong because, I mean, having a bunch of tools in your belt when you can sleeve up whatever you want um, whenever you're going to play in paper or something like that, it's never a bad thing. You can always try to figure out what metagame shifts are going to happen. Uh, Hydro Blasts are usually run uh, like one. Cephalid Breakfast is... Um, hmm... Cephalid Breakfast is usually playing like two or three. But they don't play red, so. Now I'm going to do this and say in before Archon of Imeria number two, eh? Oh, what? Oh, they're playing the Ephemerate. 
I, you know, that's a pretty good card against us. That's not bad. Oh, wait. Turn off auto yields. I haven't played a land yet. <clears throat> um, yeah, Sleepy, you, you be cast in Thalia's and stuff like that. It's, uh, there's some cognitive dissonance in with those decisions you're making, right? You are juggling juggling a, a couple of things right there. Thalia, Dark Ritual, Burning Wish. Hmm. This is rough. Being able to trap me right now. I don't think that I have a single out for what it's worth. Um, I can just F6 through this turn. I would have to draw exceedingly well. Um, Isaac, our matchup percentage <clears throat> um, is a little bit a little bit different. Um, okay, I needed to draw a slaughter pact there. I'm not going to win now. Um, So I have my data and the team is collecting data. We're not differentiating between kinds of initiative, mono white, um, white red, Naya, Selesnia, all of that stuff. Um, and there are, are a lot of lists. Um, so our win rates are fairly varied. Um, my win rate is lower than Bryant's, for example, and Alex's is kind of between us. Um, it's, a l I don't know if I can say for sure where we stand as far as, oh, this hand is great. Um, like what the win percentage is. I think that Bryant's spreadsheet has data on the website you can actually take a look at that should be accurate data for now. Um, Leonard, um, as far as 8cast goes, it's on the front page of MTG Goldfish. Take that with a grain of salt. MTG Goldfish is not the greatest source for data collection. Um, it's not the worst, right? It's something. It's better than nothing. 8cast um, I don't know what 8cast's initiative matchup looks like. Um, it could be good. It could be garbage for all I know. Um, I really don't know. Um, I should have... Hmm. I could have potentially played around Mindbreak Trap. Uh, team's range is something like... 30 to 60 percent I think um don't quote me on that I'm not 100 percent sure what everybody else is is I think that you'll likely find more eight cast in paper um, it being a non-reserved list deck, I know that it's a fairly popular deck in my local scene. Um, but yeah, 8cast is pretty rough. 8cast is, is not a fun matchup. Um, yeah, Isaac, we have a really large range. I don't think that we've been able to hone that down, but there's also like player variability and some of us have lower counts um, as far as actual matches played so those ranges can can vary quite a bit chalice of the void okay hmm anointed peacekeeper is pretty good um, they can name this Wish Claw Talisman. And my Prismatic Ending is now a little bit stretched. Oh, they're just going to name Prismatic Ending. Okay. Well, 
we'll see what happens. Brainstorm is pretty good. So we have enough mana to ad nauseum. Um, We just need to get rid of this chalice so that we can actually capitalize on that. Um, so let me read this really quick. Prismatic ending costs two more to cast. Um, but I can spend any mana that I want, so the converge we'll still see everything so what I can do is prismatic ending with this three mana and then I can brainstorm yeah I think that that's fine so we're going to find a plateau get all four colors of mana out and available and now we have Three colors. It doesn't matter how many colors, actually. Um, I realized that I was thinking about Anointed Peacekeeper. I wasn't going to remove Anointed Peacekeeper. I wanted to remove the Chalice. I didn't need anything more than the one color, but that's fine. Pretty wide range of draws from them, even within the range of builds. Uh, consistency with hate pieces is not there. Yes, I agree, Isaac. Um, they are kind of like Moon Stompy in that regard, where they have they have to deal with whatever their hand gives them. Right now, that could be an initiative creature, that could be an anointed peacekeeper, that could be an Archon of Imeria, and those initial threats is what the game is going to revolve around until that first wave is dealt with. Um, kind of like, oh, are you going to have a fast goblin draw as Moon Stompy? Are you going to have kind of a moon chalice start with that? Or whatever it might be. <clears throat> yeah, mana, mana, mana. That does it. Okay, cool. One card in hand, and we're just drawing off the top really consistently this league. Uh, we're going to pop out our revealed zone. You know, Jidenham, uh, you really did call it. You said mana, and mana was delivered. Uh, yeah, and around Mindbreak. And there's Lion's Eye Diamond and Burning Wish. We're off to a great start. Bright of Flame, Dark Ritual, sure. And a land. This is lovely. Chrome Moxes, another Ride of Flame, another Lion's Eye Diamond. I would like to play around a potential Mindbreak trap. Um, initiative is, oh, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, Initiative is not really playing Mind Break Trap anymore. Uh, it is significantly lower um, in popularity. Let's see if I make sure to sequence this correctly. I guess I don't really need to worry about what sequencing. Uh, Hey, Malone. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see you in chat. Uh, those were some very good uh, cards off of the initial Nauseam, for sure. Um, and then it just kept on getting better and better until, well, you know, it didn't. And we won. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, that is the way that we beat Initiative, I will say. We win game one, so that on game three, assuming that we lose game two, game three we're on the play, and we have the ability to deploy our mana, deploy our spells underneath the chalice zero, right? If I was on the draw against that chalice zero, I would have had a 
much tougher time of it because they would have been able to deploy that anointed peacekeeper and that chalice before I was able to play out anything. I would have just been drawing and drawing and drawing to try to get land three, which who knows if that was going to happen or not. Being on the play in game three is a huge game changer. Um, before I start this match, I'm going to run a quick ad. I'm going to tell you, uh, yeah, I didn't totally McKinley the Nas. Um, naming Wishclaw would have been a good option as well. Yes. Um, okay. I'm going to run a quick ad. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our token pack. If you are playing in paper, it's really awesome to actually use in, in lieu of like marking everything on a piece of paper because at competitive REL events, you can't actually use dice anymore. You can knock dice over and they can be easily misrepresented. So let's talk to you a little bit about our um, token pack. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right. Uh, I am really glad that you guys like the token packs. I have one myself. It's been fantastic to play in paper with. Um, yeah, it's a great holiday gift. It's really nice. I'm going to probably pick up another set just because... Um, Sometimes if I'm showboating, don't hold me against, don't hold this against me. Sometimes if I'm showboating, I run out of storm tokens and I need more storm. Um, that's a personal problem. I should probably stop showboating, but instead I'm going to buy another token pack. Um, Leonard, we need a sliced token. Uh, what do I need? Uh, oh, Sleepy. Hey, I'll see you around. It's good to, good to catch you on stream again. Um, also, by the way, if anybody is liking the stream, make sure to like, uh, comment in chat. Tell me about how your day was, how much you're liking uh, the new streaming schedule Thursdays at 7 Central. Um, and also, if you want, you can become a member. We've got some really cool emotes in chat that you can keep spamming. Uh, silenced token. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, silenced would have been... We have like a veil. Like it's, it says summertime over it. Um, wow. Okay. This is a hand where I'm keeping, but I am also going to figure out what my opponent is known for playing. Uh, they play a bunch of Pioneer. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm all right with that. Um, oh, a token that just says shush. That would be fantastic. I like that. Um, Spirit Squad. Hey, how's it going? Oh, we've got a mod in chat. That's awesome. Uh, we've been on... This is match three um we played up against lands and then we just finished up against initiative naya initiative um wait what am i doing i need to stop talking i need to turn one my opponent um but we're 2-0 so far feeling pretty good about it um we're gonna see about what this echo gives us um Dolphin, um, popper streams, not from me. I can certainly see if anybody else on the team would like to stream popper, but that is not, hmm. It's not what I, uh, what I know. Now, I can certainly learn with you, but that seems like a very painful process to make public. Um, not sure if that would be the greatest thing ever. It's 
speaking of not the greatest thing ever, that Echo could have been better. Oh, and against uh, Initiative again. Oh, wait a second. <gasps> They're passing. Uh, well. Okay. Oh, yeah, we do have... It's like... It's right there. The, um, the results the record for the legacy league um went two and two last local tournament misread and lost ah uh, that's rough yeah reading reading the card explains the card but sometimes you don't read the card and you miss you like assume that it was the way that you thought it was and it ends up not being that but that's all right um play limited i have not played oh my gosh wait a second we mana screwed our opponent with this echo. They're going to clean up. They don't have a second land. This is great. Oh, man. Um, sometimes. Oh, man. We have too much mana. Um, sometimes you can mana screw your opponent with echo Vions. That's uh, that's incredible. I love that. My opponent is moving to discard. Uh, Isaac, I don't play much limited. I have played the, um, the Vintage Cube online. That's been a lot of fun. I have... Uh, some locals that have a vintage cube that I need to need to buy into and, and play some. Um, oh, they're moving to discard again. This is excellent. Oh man, this is chef's kiss. Um, I'm gonna fetch here. I would like to not draw. Um, more of this. Yeah, we're playing just Drago Control. That's exactly... Oh, my gosh. Mox Opal number three. Okay. Um, DMR is like Vintage Cube Light. Okay, I'm probably going to have to give it a try. I do like that there is an actual Storm deck. Like four Empty of the Warrens, Turnabouts, Peregrine Drake. That sounds like a blast. Um, I might have to like buy a box and draft with my friends or something like that. Um... I don't know. Maybe we can't even find a box at that point, but we'll have to see. Okay. Hey, they finally found something. But they um, likely are not going to be able to play anything off of two mana. Um, so, Malone, you are correct. That was a turn two Nas. Um, Nathan, that's an interesting take. Slim Shady is not someone that I've been compared to in recent memory. Uh, in any memory, actually, for that matter. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to jam Malone. That's that's kind of where, where I was. I just kind of wanted to to play fast and loose. Wishclaw. Okay. We're going to be able to do the thing next turn. Hopefully. Uh, I don't know if I like being compared to Eminem. That's all right. Um, and yeah, we're not really, we're not really casting Pyroblast here, are we? Um, not really the league for it. The league is full of initiative. Like if you want to be able to test Pyroblast, you need to be playing in prelims. You need to be playing in challenges, which is kind of what we build the deck to do anyway. Um, but it is a little bit unfortunate, especially since they've finally drawn enough lands to cast White Plume Adventurer. That's the best thing that they have. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, this is fantastic. Brian, that's rude. Man, I don't need that. Dropping the sick beats. The sick beats are actually stream beats. Um, unsponsored. But like, Harris Heller and stream beats is great. Okay, we're gonna do the thing, finally, on turn six. Um, oh. Well, now we can just peer, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is a lot of this is a lot of mana. Um, this 
might even just be enough to natural storm. This might be enough to natural storm. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, let's just make all Grixis. Because we can. Honestly, this probably feels really uh, disrespectful to our opponent. Oh, I guess, you know what? They could have... They could have a Solitude, actually. I should... Okay, okay. They could have had Solitude. I didn't play around a Solitude. I could have by activating a Wishclaw Talisman and getting a Lion's Eye Diamond. I wasn't thinking about a, a Solitude. Um, getting a Silence also would have worked. I had plenty of mana. Um, it would have been just fine. Oh, Malone. Pier is... Pier is such a drug. It's actually fun to resolve in paper, too. It's a little... The way you have to resolve it in paper is a little BM because you have to, like, count out every single card that you're drawing. And it feels a little rude to be like, yeah, this is my hand of 27 cards. Um... You don't draw that many. Can't really do that. Um, but, man, resolving peers is, is, oh, man, it's, it's great. Uh, Nathan, that is a pretty good way to resolve it. I typically... Um, that seems a little bit more dexterity forward. Um, wow, hold up. Um, this does not do anything, unfortunately. That's so close. I have to mulligan this. Um, I have to mulligan this as well. Hmm. I'll keep this. I'm not happy about it, but they've also mulliganed to five, so we're chasing something. Ah, Nathan, a computer scientist. Yes, I I kind of go through one pass, um, and I just go through from top to bottom. I just establish how many cards are in the deck first. Um before doing anything else. So I will count the cards that are outside of the library and my opponent is told that I have 60 cards and they can check with the judge based on my registered list or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then I, I establish that, figure out how many are left, divide it by two, and then just count from the top. And then I verify it by counting the remaining cards. Um, two, rela two relays in the same turn is very re very dirty it is also very fun to do uh, there's a lot of fun things you can do in storm uh, well if you resolve a burning wish twice and you have two cards then ugh, deafening silence okay that one's a tough one Um, if you have the Burning Wish, then you have an automatic, oh, there's more cards in there, so I can just put one from the bottom pile into the top pile, and it's just fine. Oh my gosh. It would be really nice if I realized that my opponent was hellbent. Mm, that one's gonna smart for a while. Take a break. Mm, yeah, extra hellbent. They can cast their infernal tutors for the rest of the game without doing anything. 
we're gonna draw some cards. Um, wow, I was a little distracted. I was I could have just burning wished for a prismatic ending there. I uh, I got a little flustered when I thought seized my opponent. So I'm gonna take a quick breather, and that elite spellbinder is gonna punish. Um, That's too bad. Although I guess the Burning Wish is going to be exiled with Elite Spellbinder instead of the Prismatic ending, which might actually end up being better. Um, not, that set, not that this is like a good situation. There should be a Prismatic ending in my hand instead of a Burning Wish. But... Um, It's not the end of the. It's not the end of the world. They took the Mishra's bobble. Um, okay. That um, that's also a choice. Nick, hey, how's it going? Let's see. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a regular dude. I'm just a regular old guy. Boy, B O I this is me. Give me a break. Oh man, three in the morning. All right, Leonard. Well, it's good to have you on stream. Uh, make sure to do the whole thing, like, favorite, subscribe, the nonsense. But I'll catch you around for sure. Okay, getting clocked for three, going down to 14. My opponent has two cards in hand. Well, this prismatic ending is gonna hit this deafening silence. Uh, I'm pretty sure about this wish for deafening silence. Like that's the guarantee that I know that I need to get done before I can move anything forward. And then I can reevaluate what the top of my deck is going to give me. Um, now, the one thing that I could do here is imprint a Dark Ritual under the Chrome Mox and cast the Mishra's Bauble to draw a little bit further. Um, but I think that we're going to potentially need the extra mana. Um, from Dark Ritual. So I'm just going to pass. I think that we can just wait. Waiting it out is just fine. They're not presenting that quick of a clock. They have yet to have land three so that they can continue deploying the threats in their hand. That Lotus Petal, instead of another Chrome Mox, has really helped. Oh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? That's all right. Okay, well now I don't want to play this Mishra's Bobble. I want to play this Brainstorm. So that Bobble's still going to have to wait. Ooh. Bingo. Bingo, bango, bongo. Um, how about how about we just Echo? I need to have more faith in the top of my deck. Uh, brainstorm. This is, this is why we don't cut Brainstorm. Like, we've talked about, oh, you know, we can play a brainstorm-less list, and no, we can't. No, we can't. It's the best card in Legacy. Um, okay, well, that's unfortunate, because we're not really doing much after that. Um... I am going to bobble myself because I have a fetch land. Um, tips on playing around eight cast. Ugh. Um, it's a really fine line that you have to play um, between going fast and playing around the fact that they have eight forces and metallic rebukes. Uh, it's 
it's kind of tough. Um, not the easiest thing in the world. So we're gonna, they're gonna show me a Cavern of Souls. And I'm doing all of this now, by the way. Um, finally, hey, Dolphin, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally a winning record. So far, so good. We'll see. Um, I'm doing all of my bobble cracking now because if I draw a silence, I want to silence walk them now. I didn't, but um, after them drawing seven fresh new cards, eight fresh new cards, um, being able to potentially draw into action and then uh, winning on my next turn uh, was more important than waiting. Oh. Oh, we're playing Trinisphere. Well, that's a choice. Um, Jitem, yeah, that is... Uh, the draws had to balance out the Brainstorm, right? That's how that works. Um, okay, so I can Slaughter Pact here. Um, I don't need to be taking all of the damage here. Um, I can still draw three of the... Um, prismatic endings that are still in the deck. We're just gonna have to see what happens. Yeah, Malone. Uh, three ball is a choice. I think that I, w okay, so if my opponent who has six cards in their hand, one of which is a Cavern of Souls. Uh, Raymond, yeah, this is initiative. Um, also, welcome in. This is our second time playing initiative, this league. The second match was Naya initiative. Getting back to this Slaughter Pact, I think I want to do it pre-combat because if they have two White Plume Adventurers, for example, um, I'll be dead next turn. Uh, so I want to leave myself a little bit of a cushion for the trap room of the initiative. Um, well, Jitem, they're compensating for a lot. And I think that they're underestimating how bad, or I guess they're overestimating how good their matchup is um, in fair decks, like against Delver or against, I don't know, name your fair deck of choice. Um, so they feel the need to shore up unfair decks, which they're already pretty good at, so I think that they're just kind of misevaluating. But again, this also could just be biased because I'm losing to a Trinosphere and who knows. Um, so let's see. Do I stream on Twitch, Raymond? No, I don't. Uh, I just stream on YouTube. I'm using the Epic Storms YouTube channel to stream. Um, streaming on YouTube for me is just a little bit easier. Uh, it's worked out really nicely, actually. Um, this is not a Gentoo Linux system. This is just a Windows system. I technically do have Linux on this machine, but I don't really access it very often. Um, but MTGO works well enough. Um, on Windows, I don't need to worry about Linux or anything like that. You know what? I think I am going to pay for this Slaughter Pact. Hmm. I think the only thing that can save me now is a another <laughs> another miracle brainstorm if i draw a brainstorm next turn i can potentially do something 
No, I don't think I can actually. Hmm. Yeah, they just actually sealed the deal. Yeah, I don't have enough mana for any of this. Uh, and they get to look at my hand. I should have conceded a lot earlier, but that's all right. Um, okay, game three, which like we've we've won game one, right? We can lose game two because game three, we're gonna be on the play. Um, I can't remember who was talking about our initiative matchup and our data points. However, if we win game one, we are significantly more likely, I don't remember, I don't know if I actually have looked up the numbers um, and calculated them, just kind of glanced at them. Uh, the, um, the likelihood of us winning a match is much more likely to happen if we win game one because we'll be on the uh we'll be on the play for game three if we lose game one we can't really come back in sideboard games like we need to uh emacs <laughs> no i don't think so no yeah seems a little seems a little tough for for the likes of me um oh you can keep joking don't worry about that oh okay uh this is a keep. So, you know what initiative has a really tough time beating? My favorite storm spell, Empty the Wands. This is gonna be great. And there's Bryant, yeah, absolutely. If you are a member of this YouTube channel, you can spam all of the goblin emotes that you want. It's a very fun way to showcase a your appreciation of my favorite card, Empty the Warrens. Um, I actually, so Empty the Warrens is my favorite storm spell but it's mostly because I really like my goblin tokens. Um, hey, Michael, there we go, absolutely. And and a commander to lead them into battle. A little bit of Rograk, son of Roga in there. But yeah, Dolphin, this is exactly why you don't count, cut empty. Oh yeah, that's, that's cute. Um, so, Jitem, my tokens are all the unglued goblin tokens, the silver-bordered ones. Um, oh, this is Time Spiral empties for sure, Raymond. Um, but I will have... I have DMR coming in just because... Might as well. Um, but all of my goblin tokens are signed by the artist and they're signed by a lot of close friends of mine. So I have a really nice personal, personalized uh, goblin token army that I, oh, I just love smashing people to bits with. It's fun, especially when I get to kill someone with the goblin token that they sign. Um, oh, my favorite art. This is, this is just classic. It's not like the greatest art in the world. Um, objectively speaking but it is the art that i know um which means that it's the art that i would that i like better but i don't know if that's just because it's a better art or because it's the one that i've been casting the most um oh a trinosphere here would be great um oh tell your friend that they need to customize their tokens a little bit more um, ooh, they do have enough mana to cast. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say they could cast a Solitude and slow us down a little bit. Mm, actually, no, I don't think that that would have slowed us down at all. They would have still died. Hmm. Uh, 
And once again, uh, McKinley, eat your heart out. This Empty the Warrens is never being cut. <laughs> Not if I have any say about it. Uh, Jigglypuff, that's a good one. That's a good goblin token. Um, Jigglypuff is definitely a little bit of a goblin. Oh, for what it's worth, not that it really mattered at all, but Anointed Peacekeeper named Lion's Eye Diamond, which is a good name if you aren't facing down a brutal army of goblins, M15 goblins. Really cool art. Carl Kapinski is a, a great magic artist. Um, not my goblins, but they're very good goblins. I think my opponent is dead. I believe my opponent is dead. I have the initiative. Oh, that's another thing I have in my deck box. I have an initiative uh, token and I have a large oversized um, dungeon. So that makes us three and oh. We're going to take a little bit more of an ad break. Uh, my Batter Skull opponent, yeah, they wish. Initiative was playing Stoneforge Mystic at the very beginning, and then they learned that that's not a good choice. Um, not that it would have helped them here. 14 goblins races a Stoneforge Mystic on the play, I think? I don't know. Um, so we're going to learn a little bit about Moxfield really quick, uh, a little bit of an ad, just a second. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. All right, welcome back. Yeah, the music is still playing. I forgot to mute the music. Um, I'm good at juggling, but I'm not great at juggling. Uh, we are gonna start uh, looking for another league and see what happens. A winning record, yes, I know. First time for everything. Um, I'm gonna message someone really quickly on Discord. Okay, looking for an opponent. So how's everybody in chat doing? Um, white card, Solitude Ephemerate. That would have been a solid, that would have been solid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did we see Ephemerate from our opponent or was that the last initiative opponent? Um, I honestly can't remember, but that would have been a good one. Okay, we are up against an opponent. Um, Liberty Bell. Uh, we lost the die roll. First time losing the die roll, I guess. Um, hopefully that's the only thing we lose. Oh, denied you the trophy. Oh, man. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm not that sorry, right? Um, and our, our hand is great. Um, we're going to see how it all goes together. Hmm. I am in, I am interested to see how Ephemerate is going to work in the initiative matchup. Like it's obviously really good in the mirror because it's not going to be countered at all, right? Um, and you can just rebuy the initiative and have it a, have a guaranteed initiative over the next couple of turns, even if your opponent takes it from you. Uh, if our opponent is playing blue, we actually can bring in the Pyroblasts. Hey. 
we can actually try out the card that we wanted to try out this stream. A um, couple of pyroblasts in the sideboard for our fair blue matchups. Well, mostly fair blue matchups. I'll bring it in against like Cephalid Breakfast or things like that. Um, not quite the definition of fair. So I'm gonna hold on to, well, I'm gonna see what my opponent is doing in my upkeep first. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to all of these zeros. Galvanic Relay is going to be our goal for this game um, in a general sense, right? Turn by turn, that can certainly change, but my, my desire is to absolutely overwhelm our opponent with Galvanic Relay. All we have to do is draw one. Now, technically, we have Burning Wish to find one, or you know, we have Wish Claw to get one. Um, we'll need a little bit more mana for all of that. If we were to just raw dog one, we're after thirty seconds. I can think. I can say things that are less kid friendly. Um, I would just like to draw one off the top. Top of our deck has been very good to us. Um, all mat or all league, I suppose. Um, I wouldn't hate that it continues to do so. Okay. They've chosen to shuffle. They didn't shuffle the first ponder. They did shuffle the second. Oh, hey, you know, Jitem, you called it. Red Necro, let's go. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, you just have to have faith in the deck and it'll pull through for you, right? Uh, as long as you believe now to be fair i will say this could be cephalid breakfast right island tundra a couple of ponders um not something that is a guarantee to be control this could be cephalid breakfast still galvanic relay not at its greatest against a combo deck but i'm not gonna say no to a bunch of cards Heart of the cards indeed, Justin. Heart of the cards indeed. Now, unfortunately, I can't really deploy anything else to kind of try to bait out interaction, but five cards off the top and a couple of Mishra's baubles seems pretty good to me. Uh, a couple of Mox Opals, a Mishra's Bobble. Okay, so because we revealed a non-Mox Opal zero drop, I am going to be able to crack both of these Bobbles. Um, and not have to worry about losing Metalcraft. I suppose I could have cracked both of them to play around something like Narset. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily a card that sees a ton of play. Um, my opponent is playing the brainstorm that they just drew. Um, and Bobble is going to be able to give me a little bit extra, oof, brainstorm into a ponder. This ponder is likely to shuffle. It does. So they just... Spent two mana for an imperfect brainstorm. Um, and I missed land three. They are Urza Saga. This is indeed Cephalid Breakfast. Okay. Um, draw for Bobble. Brainstorm is pretty good still. Um, their hand might just be full of permission, or it could be full of like removal. They could have prismatic endings, which I guess they probably would have cast on these. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, we're in my upkeep. I still get one more card. <laughs> that's great. Orm's Chant. Well, that's a good card. Um, I'm not going to deploy that quite yet. I will let them try to counter cards that don't necessarily matter first. We 
we have not played a land drop. Uh, oh, Dolphin, yeah. Breakfast is a great deck. I think that I'm excited to have it in the limelight. Um, again. You know, from like 2012 or something like that. Uh, I've played it some online. And I really, I really enjoy it. So we're we're gonna juice all of this up and we're gonna make this orange chant look really good. So the nice thing about breakfast, Isaac, against initiative is that um, they don't care about the creature beatdown um, because they have a very good combo that's backed up by force of will. Now, as far as this goes, I technically have lethal if I'm going to disrespect. Yeah, okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. If Burning Wish gets countered, I can follow up with a main deck Galvanic Relay. Um, so we'll take a Burning Wish, uh, and it just resolves. This Tendrils of Agony gets into hand. One to and my opponent has conceded you love to see it uh yeah spirit squad not quite seven but it actually ended up working in our favor just fine um okay as far as breakfast goes let me pull up our handy dandy sideboard guide that you get access to if you're a patreon and if you don't want to become a Patreon, maybe you want to become a YouTube member and be able to spam a lot of emotes like we just had with a bunch of goblin tokens. So, um, let's see. Cephalid Breakfast. This is going to be pretty easy. We're going to take our Thoughtseize. And we're going to take out our, our Galvanic Relays. And we're going to make a swap. Now, we could absolutely uh, bring in Pyroblast. I was really hoping that this was going to be fair. Um, because fair blue pyroblast would absolutely come in and we would lean into the galvanic relay um, but galvanic relay is not very good right now because we can develop everything into a nice relay turn and then they can just turn two kill us turn three kill us out of nowhere so that's one of the strengths of I have cat hair everywhere I'm sorry I'm picking my face because it itches and it itches because there's cat hair tickling everything uh, the herpes of the pet world just like glitter is the herpes of the craft world pet hair is just it's everywhere um okay pyroblast um we know that they have hydroblast in the sideboard what do we think about potentially cutting mox opal four or pyroblast one I don't know if this is a good idea, right? They obviously are a Hydroblast deck. They are a Force of Will deck, so Pyroblast is going to have a lot of targets. Their combo involves a blue creature. Not that I'm going to really count on that one. Um, but you know what? I don't think that we're going to get another opportunity to play Pyroblast this league. Um yeah, they also play Force of Negation. Yes, that is true. Uh, Malone, that's right. So I don't think that I want to be playing more than one. Uh, I would much rather lean in on Orm's Chance and Silences that are also really good against their combo, right? Um, they can go Hellbent, and then I can chant them in response to a uh, Narcomoeba Trigger or something like that. Um, so I do want it, 
but I think that I want to lean into the Thought Seizes and the Orange Chants a little bit more. So we're gonna submit this. Five seconds to go, you know? Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. And um, you only need one if you draw it, right? I do think that as risky as this is with one land, it is a, a, it's a black source, which is what we need, and we're on the draw. I think that this is going to be a keep. Um, my opponent kept with seven as well. Um, now, Cephalid Breakfast, there was a recent finish. Um, a list was playing Orm's Chant and Silence and Flusterstorm and Force of Negation and Force of Will and Daze. Um, I wasn't, I'm not super excited about coming up against all of that, but that's why we have the Thought Seizes, I suppose, and Silences of our own. Um, I could cut Bobble, yes, Jitem, that's correct. Uh, I draw land number two anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I think that I want Mox Opal to be on more um, consistently. I don't want to cut more... Oh, these are the Force of Negations we were talking about. Okay. So, I would like to take Nomads, right? Um, and just leave them with force of negation times two which this pyroblast answers but they have another combo piece in shuko that they can get off of this urza saga so it actually is not going to do what i want it to do um so i think that i am priced into taking the force of negation but this does let us develop a wish claw talisman next turn assuming that they um, don't draw a blue card. And their ponder, they chose not to shuffle their ponder, so they know what they're drawing. Um, hmm. There's the saga. Here's the question. Did they draw a blue card? Um, well, that's good. Hmm. So, let's see. I'm playing the land, obviously. This is five six, seven, eight, nine, potentially. So if I can, if they drew a blue card, I can use the Pyroblast to protect the Wishclaw Talisman. I can't use it to protect something like an Ad Nauseum because I would need to crack the Lion's Eye Diamond. But if Wishclaw resolves, Okay, what I can do is only deploy the Rite of Flame, and if Wishclaw resolves, then I'm fine. I can pass the turn, and have the Pyroblast up for later. Um, I think that this is all good. And if they do decide to force, then I can deploy my artifacts after Pyroblast protects the Wishclaw Talisman. Um, so I'm going to Wishclaw here with Pyro up instead. Um, and that resolved. Hmm. Do I want to disrespect? Well, I don't care if they counter right. Um, 
because if they counter right, I know that they don't have anything else, and I can dark ritual into a wish claw talisman, mox opal, lion's eye diamond, right? Um, as it stands here, I can potentially disrespect. Uh, What do we think? Did they draw a blue card? What's going on? Y'all from Oklahoma, right? Did they draw a blue card? Should I disrespect the force of negation and put an ad nauseum on the stack? Uh, yeah, Isaac, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you on that one. I think that they did. Uh, they knew what they were drawing off of the ponder. I think, yeah, you know, you're right. Why else? My opponent is a thinking and breathing opponent. They are a good magic player and I should respect that. You are correct. Uh, we don't have relay in our main deck actually, uh, spirit squad. We boarded it out. All four are sitting right here, um, which would be nice to have. But now they're holding up a hard cast force of negation. I would like, like to draw a silence. Okay, yeah, you know what? Ah, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> damn. Yeah, just just call it. Just call it, guys. It's okay. Uh, have by the way, I should run an ad next um, next break for MT, MTGO Premium. Uh, I forgot that that's a thing that I should promote. Um, now that they're going to Orm's Chant, I'm going to be able to back it up with a Pyroblast. And then we're all happy-go-lucky all the way home. Uh, you know what? I think we're going to be able to cast a Pyroblast. We did it. We did it, chat. We did the thing. Pyroblast was cast. We finally, we did what we came here to do. And to be completely honest, it's looking great here. Land, land, land. Okay. Burning Wish. Need one of those to win. Dark Ritual doesn't hurt. Hmm. I could use some zeros. That's a zero, Mishra's Bobble. Chrome Mox is good. Hmm. It's kind of tough. So I am dead to, I have a side uh, main deck echo, right? That I can reveal. Sorry, I can scroll this over so it's bigger. It's all right here, but. Um, so here are my options. I can. Yeah, I have a land drop. I have two available mana, right? Uh, two available mana, and then this is four. Um, hey, Tony, how's it going? Yes, you just you came here just for the the pyroblast. It is exactly what was written on the tin. You show up, and so it is. Uh, I think that I need to keep keep flipping. This is not lethal. This is a brainstorm into potentially more. Silence, that's not gonna do it, but I'm gonna stop there. Oof, I don't know what order these all flip in, but that was a Wish Claw Talisman into an Echo into a Lion's Eye Diamond, or it would have been a Lion's Eye Diamond into an Echo. Uh, either way, glad we stopped. And then I don't have a non-pain land, but 
LED was the first one. Oh, well, now I'm doubly glad because I might have flipped again. Uh, I can grab the Badlands. It's kind of sucky that I have to um, Hmm. When you draw multiple, it's the rightmost first. Okay, cool. Uh, that's really neat. Yeah, I didn't actually know that. So I will need to pay attention to that, see when it comes up again. Um, unfortunately, I do think that I have to echo. Um, yeah, yeah, I have to echo here. You're right, Isaac. So I can dismiss that all. Two black and a blue floating. Man, wow, look at that. All of that work and I don't have red mana uh, to win. So let's see what my opponent is drawing. Oh, wait, wait a second. I've just handed them the win uh, because they have, this is gonna get their Shuko and then the Wish Claw Talisman can get them the Cephalid Illusionist. Uh, no, I did not wanna put a claw into play. I would have rather, oh man, there it is. I would have rather had the mana. Um, I guess I could have grabbed a Wish Claw to grab the LED and make red mana, but I didn't, like, the toss-up between red and blue is a little interesting. Um, we'll see if, I mean, my opponent sees the line, right? They're a thinking and breathing opponent, um, and they have Flusterstorm protection. That's nice of them. Uh, oh, they have it from hand. Okay. I do want to see how they boarded, so I am going to let them go through their thing here. Unfortunately, it's probably gonna take them some time, but I do want to see if they're the Silence Orms chant build. I think that that's gonna be pertinent information. You don't need to concede just because you're dead. Your opponent can show you some useful things. Um, but yes, uh, Isaac, the line was definitely, uh, there was a line to Wishclaw into another LED. Cabal therapy. Sure. Chosen card is surgical extraction. We have been known to play surgical extraction in metas where we weren't really sure what our extra card was going to be. So it's possible, we could have done it. We're not. I just wanna see what's going on here. That's all. Um, yeah, there are certainly pluses and minuses to the idea of putting another Wish Claw into play. Um, I just, I chose not to. Obviously, we were specifically punished, but if we drew a brainstorm instead of the burning wishes, then, you know, we would have wanted to do the other thing. I don't think that there's any particularly right way to play that. Um, I'm not seeing, by the way, I'm not seeing silences uh, yet, and they're all done. So unless they have silence and orms chant in their hand, um, we get to go to game three. All right, Pyroblast did look good. I don't want to bring, um, technically claw filters into red mana on board. Thanks to pedal, but you lose a mana. Yeah. Um, 
true. Okay. I'm just going to keep our configuration. Oh, well, you are absolutely, Dolphin. I'm keeping the Pyroblast. I don't think that I want to board in the second one. Um, I would rather be efficient rather than having... What is this? This is going to be eight protection spells. That seems like a lot. I would rather not board up to nine protection spells. Um, obviously, this is all this is all very good. This is what I want. Uh, one more might be just a bit too much. Let's see. Can we make it to four and zero? Oh? I don't know. If you want to become a YouTube member, you can spam sad Nas if we lose this match, or you can spam a bunch of really cool Bryshock faces um, if we win this match, you know? Show us what you feel. There. I have, I have the ability to chat. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I agree, Tony. One is pretty good. I, I think that I'm happy with just the one. It also can be something that we can instant speed wish claw activation for. Uh, no glad nausea yet. I need to get Bryant in on that. But our the number of emotes are locked behind the number of subscribers and YouTube members that we have. So if you want to become a YouTube member, you can inch us closer and closer to the next um, emoji uh, emote goal. Eh, well, we've got red mana now, but I'm not going to keep this one. This is, hmm, this is pretty good. I... want to see what my opponent does. Um, I'm gonna keep this. I need to put, it is a little bit clunky. Um, I'm gonna put a card back. I think that card is gonna be the Burning Wish. Um, Okay, my opponent mulliganed to six cards as well. I would have really liked to have had a Thoughtseize here. Um, keep this bottom the Burning Wish. Mostly just because if we do get to find our second land drop off the top, right, without brainstorming, um, we can deploy this Wish Claw Talisman out of out from under Thoughtseize disruption like that. Um, now, I don't know what you're talking about, Jitem. We've had great top decks. We've had great brainstorms all of this league. Um, we are we are whitelisted to the top. I think that if our opponent Cabal therapies us in the blind. I'm not going to do anything. They are likely to name Lion's Eye Diamond uh, as the primary name in the dark. They started with an island, so it doesn't matter. I'm also not going to end step this brainstorm. Yeah, that echo didn't. I guess, I guess that Echo did need to balance out. Oh, we had it on top anyway. Look at that. That Echo needed to balance out what the rest of our luck was showing us. You think that this is better? This is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool island. Um, this is an MTGO premium account today for sure at least that's what we're going to try to convince everybody of um isaac my personal favorite 
Isaac, uh, Island is, um, oh, are they going to try to fluster storm this? No. Okay. Huh. Okay. back a couple of burning wishes and pass. Um, my favorite island is the Euro basic land with the White Cliffs of Dover on it. That's my favorite island. I have a, my go-to islands are the, the Euro basics. I don't have very many of them except for the Scottish Highlands, uh, the Plains. Um, I do have a few of those. It's the French Swamplands. Um, The Scottish Highlands, the White Cliffs of Dover, um, it's the Spanish mountain range that I can't remember for the mountain, and then uh, I can't remember what the forest is. Dolphin, thank you very much for the luck. Uh, I hope that this is a 5-0 run as well. We're gonna see. I'm gonna deploy a Wish Claw Talisman, by the way. Um, if me doing all of this was not already apparent. Um, play around days. I should have seen if they were playing days. They were playing Aether Vial. Um, which I saw was a little bit different. So not all lists are playing Aether Vial, right? This is kind of a classic throwback. Um, maybe I should have played out both. Spell Pierce is a thing as well. Unglued is, is always good. Um, yeah, Legacy Beta lands. You can't go wrong with a classic, right? They are top dog for a reason. Um, and then not blinging out your cube in, in beta lands also seems like a reasonable way to go. Uh, I think that's just fine. Okay. Are we going to find out if they have a turn three? I mean, eventually. One way or another, right? Whether they have one or not, Oh, okay. Well, they get to see this. It's a nice little peek. They don't get to draw a card, but Gitaxian Probe is a powerful magic uh, magic card. I've I've been told. Speaking of cube cards, jeez. Um. There's a saga. So they've got the requisite mana. There's the nomads. Yeah. I was playing back when I played Popper. It was when um, Days was legal and Gush was legal, and I played. Um, What's the card that allows you to um, I'm going to cast this right now so I can F6. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, we did not get there, unfortunately. My opponent had a protected turn three. Um, I was playing, sorry, I was playing um, Tireless Tribe combo. That was a lot of fun. Um, sad Nos it is. Yeah, Isaac, you got him. Uh, hit those Sad Nos uh, emotes. Actually, really quick, before 
Before we keep going, I am going to run another ad. This time I'm going to mute the mu music and run an ad for our Patreon, which supports me directly because I write articles. So one second. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Oh, that was pretty quick. Alrighty then. Um, let's get started on a league match. Uh, see you around, Isaac. It was glad to. It was good to have you on stream. I'm glad to see you here. Um, yeah, Tireless Tribe was a lot of fun for sure. Uh, and I guess it's still fun. Someone, uh, yeah, tell me about it. Is Tireless Tribe still a thing in Popper? Because I might have to check it out. It was a lot of fun. I'm sure it's a lot more. Um, toned down now that gush is gone because that was, was a really nice little boost of damage um i bomb all righty then that's a name would you like to play first yes man this is a good hand um this might even be a moxopal yeah, okay, we're going to keep this. What am I talking about? We're going to keep this. Uh, league dumps but not challenges. That makes sense. That's a little unfortunate. Um, I haven't really kept in t uh, like in touch with Popper at all. Uh, I hear that it's pretty good. I hear that there's doing some good things. I just haven't really interacted with the format at all. Um I'm not surprised that it's not very good anymore. So we can do everything that our hand wants to do. Um, wow. Oh boy. Um, real quick, I'm gonna... I'm going to figure out what our opponent might be playing. No results from I-Bomb. Are they playing a Force of Will deck? It doesn't really matter. I'm going to disrespect them. Uh, hey, Raymond. How's it going? It's good to see you. Uh, welcome to the stream. We are playing in round... Uh, what is this? This is our last round. Uh, we are three and one so far, doing pretty good. Finally, a positive record on the stream. Eh? Um, we're gonna make a bunch of goblins, and it's just in time that you showed up to actually see all this happen. Yeah, who plays TES to not jam on the spot? You're you're not wrong. Uh, but, oh man, we're so much better at grinding that everybody gives us credit for. Um, oh yeah, I don't have to target with Empty the Warrens. That's right. Uh, this is seven mana. It was seven mana, wasn't it? I could have peered. Oh. Uh, I switched plans and stopped counting. I was like, oh yeah, this is totally fine. Um. Yeah, I could have just killed my opponent. Hmm. Okay. Jidem, you are correct. I could have just killed my opponent and been done with it. However, I'm going to drag it out just that little extra bit so that I can put Empty the Warrens on turn one as a kill in my spreadsheet. Um, yeah, Raymond, this is a lot cooler for sure. Uh, no ritual into plague engineer dodged one time alone for sure. Maybe I have to worry about that in the sideboard, but another thing is that I get to see what my opponent is actually doing. Malone, why are you doing me dirty like that? That 
That's so, that's so dirty. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Um, at least I got to hit them. But holy shit. Uh, okay. This is pretty awkward indeed. Yes. Uh, Vicky Minaj, tell me how you're doing. This is, you might, oh. Are we playing against Black Anish? Karn the Great Creator. Sure, sure. Why not? Oh my gosh. This is maximum punishment. This is not necessary. Um, wow. Okay. This is this is painful to experience. I'm gonna give it a couple more draws. They don't have the mana to um, kill us yet. So I can draw into Rituals and Burning Wish and still kill them. They're at four, right? I've got some time. Uh, see if we can claw out of this. Not looking great. Uh, Hey, Ian. Yeah, Archon of Imeria for sure could have been a thing, I suppose. Um, yeah, tap Ancient Tomb. They're a Trinisphere deck. You know what? I think this is good. I think we can call it. I'll concede. Man, uh, I have a local friend that would have... Loved to see that happen to me. Uh, okay, we're going to consult the sideboard guide really quick. And... Hmm. Turns out... I don't think that I have mono black on this list. Yep. Okay. Uh, Lake of the Dead into Lattice. Yeah, that would have been that would have been brutal. Okay, record this as a peer win. Yeah, absolutely. That's how that works. So I want prismatic ending. I want thought seize. Slaughter Pact seems uniquely poorly situated. Uh, Galvanic Relay. I like against discard, but I I don't know if I want that here. And then it could be a couple of silences and a mox opal. I really do like the relays though. Maybe I can trim on them and then a couple of baubles, which get significantly worse with Karn in the mix. Thoughtsies is a good answer to Karn. A little bit of sideboarding on the fly. Um, hey, Caleb, it's good to see you. How's Texas Roadhouse? Uh, go for anything in particular or just kind of having fun on a Thursday? Uh, you just missed. I don't know if you actually saw, but we, we just got destroyed. I missed a lethal line, made empty the warrens instead of casting peer into the abyss. And got turn two plague engineered into a turn three Karn the Great Creator into a turn four Trinisphere. Not my finest moment. Uh, all on stream for all to see. Uh, oh, thanks, Raymond. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to... Am I going to keep this... Man, if this Orm's Chant was a Thoughtseize, I would absolutely snap this off. As it stands, this Brainstorm is going to have to do a lot. Um, I 
We're not really going anywhere without this brainstorm. But I think we can keep it. I don't necessarily want to keep mulliganing. Oh, hey, we have the play taken away from us. Um, does that make me want to brainstorm? No, not particularly. <clears throat> hmm. Date night. Oh, that's nice. Uh, now you're on a date with me and the stream. Say hello to chat, everybody. Say hi to Caleb. Um, okay. Three mana and, you know, this very well might be a uh, an opposition agent which is going to be potentially baited out with this thought sees oh huh, they have two opposition agents this is just dandy ah. um oh i've muted the music i forgot to do that uh enjoy the music again uh okay well, why not get maximum punishment? That's fine. Everything's fine. <clears throat> yeah, well, I was speaking everything into existence uh, before, and I was talking about top decks, all this league, and it was great because I would call it and draw it, and it felt fantastic. Uh, unfortunately... I am also apparently calling what's in my opponent's hand. So, one, two, three, four, five. I can potentially empty uh, next turn. I would need to draw an untapped mana, which would be nice. Thoughtsies. I still know all of my opponent's hand. Interesting that they chose not to... That's fine. Can't really do anything about that. Um, oh, Raymond, I don't have... Like, there are multiple layers of MTGO premium. I've got, like, the basic premium. Um... It only lasts for so long, and I'm running out. I, uh, I need to wait for it to recharge. We'll see how long it lasts. Hopefully by the end of this league, I can 4-1. I'll be happy with a 3-2, but 4-1 would be great. And obviously they take the best card in my hand. That makes sense. I have three cards in hand, and I know all of them. They are effectively spending three mana to port me in the entirety of my turn. Uh, that was pretty all right. Relay would be a good draw here. Relay and another land would be nice. Are they going to... Uh, yeah, they don't need to pressure. Uh, or, well, they do need to pressure, but they're not pressuring, so... Well... That's a little rough with the opposition agent out. Um, but I might be able to sequence it so that I get what I want. I don't know. 
We'll see. We'll see what happens with this opposition agent. Either I can shuffle away uh, cards that I don't want, or I can resolve this wish claw talisman, prompt an opposition agent, and actually be able to fetch with this bloodstained mire. I don't know. We'll have to see. But so far, I'm sitting fairly pretty. Uh, there's the opposition agent. I will take the time to grab, let's see, I have blue. I think that the choice is gonna be a scrubland, or no, not a scrubland, a plateau. Uh, yeah. Okay, they have chosen to clock me, which is fine. I wish this was a burning wish so that I could peer. Uh, instead, I don't get to do that. But we're drawing live off of the top, so it could totally be a peer. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, survey says, dark ritual. Okay. Well, I am going to deploy this Wish Claw. Obviously, I'm not going to activate it, but if I draw a Prismatic Ending, then I get to do everything that I want. So we'll see how it goes. Um, they are now pressuring me. Uh, Thoughtseize, okay. I get some mana. Now I'm really glad that I cast that Wish Claw Talisman. I don't need them finding a way to Karn the Great Creator right now. In fact, I would actively like that to not happen. Uh, prismatic ending off the top. Wait a second, what are they doing? Oh, the Dothy, that's right, okay. They are hellbent. Uh, prismatic ending off the top allows me to add Nas from a low life total or echo or, let's see. That is not gonna do it, folks. I am deceased. Uh, turns out, if you screw up game one and play into uh, unnecessary hate and disruption, then you're gonna get punished for it. Um, beer is dead, yeah. Three, two is not bad. We're gonna open up this chest, right? We got a chest, we might as well open it up. Ooh, this is really laggy. Okay, let's see what's in the chest. Uh, I could not echo because of the opposition agent or the Dothy. Take your pick. Um, so I couldn't use the Wish Claw Talisman to find the echo, um, and I couldn't echo, well, I guess I could echo uh, on the hard cast. Like I could activate the Wish Claw Talisman, sack the Lion's Eye Diamonds in response, or however you want to do that, and then hard cast the Echo Vions. Uh, not the greatest idea. But yeah, let's see what this treasure chest is. Let's open it. And our consolation prize is a Rem Carolus Stalwart Slayer. Some, some knight from Midnight Hunt. Okay, cool. Well, uh, again, as I've been saying for the past little while, if you want to support this kind of content, then become a YouTube member. That's probably the best way to do that. You have awesome emotes that you can keep spamming in chat. Sad Nas from the 3-2 instead of the 4-1. But you also have the ability to access YouTube videos early if you really enjoy Bryant's content. If you enjoy my content, then you can watch me live Thursdays at 7 Central. Um, and then another way to appreciate the content or show your appreciation for the content is through our Patreon. It directly supports the site writers. 
and you can read all of our articles early. You have a bunch of really cool promos like discounts to the shop with our awesome token packs. You have our sideboard guide, which is going to be updated regularly with all of the new iterations for the deck that we have and publish. Um, It's really awesome stuff. So thank you all for hanging out, spending some time with me on your Thursday evening or whatever time of day it is for you. It's evening for me. I have really appreciated getting to hang out with you and do pretty well. Uh, Our first positive record on the stream, I'm getting a little bit more used to it spending some time thinking out the lines and talking it all out. Uh, Vicky Minaj, thank you for coming around. It's good to see you. And I will hopefully see all of you in upcoming streams. Uh, See you around, Justin. I am going to log off and I'm going to probably leave up a static for a little while um, just as we kind of close everything out. Catch you around.